Okay, so here I have a basin of some um, macro invertebrates, all been thick, in that they are bottom dwelling. And that's what you find in lodic systems, generally speaking, unless there's a very still part of the stream. And then you might have some um, neustonic creatures that are on the surface film. So I'm going to pick up critters one at a time and just sort of show you what I have here. Um, I think the first one I'll start with is this big guy. This is a caddisfly larva, a baby caddisfly, that builds a case out of the materials it finds in the stream. And actually we have another case right next to it, an empty one, sort of an older one. But the caddisfly will um, build a case around itself and then use it as a home uh, to protect itself, basically. So we'll put that one in here. I've got a couple of other caddisfly cases in here. Here's one that's very small. I hope I can pick it up. That one is made out of tiny grains of sand, and you can see it's tubular. More um, wider at one end and narrow at the other. Um, and then there's another kind of caddisfly case in here. Let's see if I can find it quickly, and if not, I'll come back to it. Uh, here we go. This one is interesting because it's square. You see the caddisfly sticking its head out. So this caddisfly makes a totally, regularly square case. It's really quite beautiful. Okay. There also are caddisflies that don't build cases. They spin nets, and I have a net spinner in here somewhere. I may not be able to find it right now, but I'll find it for you and we'll check back in about that. Um, we also have this interesting critter. Looks very wormy, but it's actually the larva of a kind of true fly called the crane fly. That's a crane fly larva, often found in um, organic debris because it's a a shredder in many cases, not all kinds, but most of them are shredders. And oh, this, whoa, oh dear, I lost it. Okay, I'll go with, do you see it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with this other one here because I just found it. Again, associated with organic debris. This is called the giant stonefly and they get bigger than this. So this is not a, the biggest I've found by any means. But this is a true shredder, and you can see in this leaf, for instance, how, how the leaf has been shredded. Oh, there's, a, <laughs> there's another giant, or giant stonefly on that leaf. So I'll put these two in here. And then on my finger is a mayfly. So I can get it suspended in the water. Uh, because they're benthic, they tend to cling or um, hold on or hide. So that little guy is a mayfly. It tends to have three tails. That's one way that you can begin to narrow down identification of the long, um, sort of skinny aquatic insects. The mayflies usually have three tails. Sometimes they have two, though, so you have to be careful. And here's one with two tails. There it is. That's called a flathead mayfly. It's very streamlined because it lives in very fast water, and you can see the two tails on that one. Oh, and here's a little baby dragonfly. Pretty small. It'll grow bigger, you know, by the time summer is over. This one's on its belly, and it's trying to get flipped back over again. Um, there we go. The dragonfly nymphs are really interesting. So this is a baby dragonfly, and I'm going to... Um, Maybe I'll send you a video that will show you how these guys eat. It's fascinating. Uh, another mayfly here. This one has three tails. Yep. Um, and then there's a net spinning caddisfly in here somewhere, which I'll find off camera and then um, we'll show you when we find it. So as you can see, often you catch debris along with your bugs and you have to look very carefully for movement and for the shapes of the bugs. And sometimes it's helpful to stir and see what things, you know, wiggle around in there or swim around. Okay, so I'm going to show you technique next.